All right, so we've, uh, we've created a couple of menus. They've been placed in our design. I maybe didn't think they'd go exactly like this. So let's talk about the aspects of customization that we have depending on the theme. So that's something that I say over and over, depending on the theme. And it's true, because this theme might have some features, another theme has other features. So at the moment, we're all using the same theme. I think it's the 2016 theme. That's why it all looks the same. But once you start to stray to other themes, the same kind of buttons and items won't exactly look the same, most likely. So if we go to our dashboard, under Appearance, click on Customize. This is related to, if you recall from a while ago, I said there were three levels of WordPress. This is still level one, the basic level, the most affordable level, which is to get some theme and customize it within the parameters that the theme author lets you. This screen, for example. There's this customized screen, and the theme authors have set up. Here are the things that you can change. Here's what you can change in this in this theme. We'll look at level two in a moment, which is the more powerful code editor. And then level three is you make your site completely from scratch, all of the code. That's the hardest one, the most expensive one, and time-consuming one. So if you look on this screen, this is your customizing Richard's Bakery, and the current theme is 2016. Here's a quick way to change it. You see a preview of your changes here, and if you like the changes, you have to then hit save there. But so far, we'll take a quick look at all of these. If you click Site Identity, this particular theme takes a logo and it puts it somewhere in the design. I don't know exactly where. But it's easy to then check it. It's easy to click something like Select Logo. We've got a couple of pictures hanging around there. If I just select one to see what it looks like, well, I'm going to take this picture, put it there. It's going to show up there. Okay. Well, this design has that. I can add a logo over it once it as a square. My, my logo is a rectangle, so I have to deal with that. Um, add logo, change logo. The name of my site is Victor's Bakery. I can change that. And there's a tagline there, just another WordPress site. Well, we talked about this previously. Remember, this is a spot for you also to, uh, to do a little SEO writing some a sentence here full of keywords. So let's say uh, East Make Bakery Specializing in Healthy Fair. Just something. You don't have to change it. But the tagline here is more keywords that people could find. Site icon. At the very top left corner is the site icon, also known as the fave icon. Almost every other website has one of these. If I randomly go to different websites, for example, if I go to the Google homepage, it's got the little Google icon. If I go to the college's homepage, it has the college's icon. If I go to, you know, just about every website out there, they have a little fave icon up there. Sometimes people pronounce it favicon, fave icon. Ours doesn't have one. It's generically blank. So if I would like my own custom icon up at the top there, it's right here, site icon. Icon must be square and at least 512 pixels wide and tall. So if I select image, just get any picture here. It's showing me right there. This is going to look like this. It's going to be up on the corner. And then also, this is a little less common, but have you ever saved a website to your phone's home screen? Very few people have. Some people have. What it is is you can visit a website, and so that you can get to it quickly, your phone has some way for you to save it right to your home screen. Your icon that you're adding here will also be used for that, so that then your site's icon shows up on their home screen there. Again, how do you do it? I never knew about that. Exactly. Not a lot of people know about that. But if you set that up, the people that do will be able to see that. At the very least, people will see your icon up on the tab of the web browser. 
I'm just selecting some stuff up here just to fill it in. Again, this is the customization that, that we are allowed by the designer. And what's cool here is you can say three different ways to view it. View it in desktop mode, which is what we've got now. View it in tablet mode, so if someone visits on a tablet, notice how your site might change. And if you're, someone visits on a mobile device, here's how it changes. This is known as a responsive design theme. The theme changes to the different size dimensions of the screen. It responds to the user's screen size. And nowadays, that's one of the big factors of SEO. Google and Bing and Yahoo, the search engines, they look for that. Is this site search engine, is, I mean, uh, mobile friendly? If it's not, that's one of the things now that hurts you. That's one of the things now that makes that prevents you from getting too high up on the results. Most themes that you get nowadays are responsive because a theme author is not going to create a non-responsive theme that no one wants anymore. Yes, there's a lot of people that don't know what responsive is. But these theme authors create a theme to reach as many people as possible, especially those that are selling their theme. And so their theme better be responsive. And nowadays, most of them are. And to test it, you can go here. Say, oh, it looks responsive. It shrunk down. Notice how my menu looks like that. Everything's smaller. It lines up nicely. It's responsive. If it wasn't responsive, the text would go off the edge of the screen. Things wouldn't grow and shrink to fit the size of the screen. They would look weird. We're in the site identity screen. And if you press back, we have other things that we can edit. What you could do is, per screen here, you could save those changes. I like to do that because if you go back and make a bunch of changes and then accidentally hit this X, you might cancel all the changes you're about to make. So I recommend when you're under the customized menu here, per sub screen that you're here, save what you do. Colors. Oh, here's a, a spot for me to change some basic colors. It doesn't have my perfect red color. It doesn't have my perfect yellow color. But I can go here. And depending what they've let me do, background color, page background color, link color, and this again will depend on the theme. Depending on your theme, you're going to get different menu items here. Let's say that's a yellow that I want, but not my exact yellow, so I can go in and customize the color. And you see a, a live view. And if you have, for example, your color formula, you can plug it in and it'll be exactly your color. header image. When you can crop images and add a new image and it recommends that size. I have an image. Let me just put it up there, see what it looks like. It's going to be a very thin image like that. And so now we have there that koala staring at you. You can add multiple images. This will create a very basic random slideshow. It's not that good. This particular theme has a spot for your square logo and a top graphic. I don't like what it looks like, so I won't show it. Background image. I can put a background image and see what that looks like. Background image. Oh, it's behind the, the plain background there. And a couple of other options. Put it on the left, center, etc. Scroll, fixed, whatever. More customization. Menu. So here's another place. This is the same as the other screen. I kind of don't like this, this way to edit your menus very much. It confuses me. I'm used to the other method. But maybe if you get used to it, it'll be fine. But here's another place for you to select your menus, um, edit your menus, and all of that. We'll talk about widgets a little bit later. Let's skip it for the moment and then static front page. It's the same as that other screen that we previously saw to change from blog layout to static. So if you make any changes, save it and close.
if you visit site, now the site has gone from this to this. I didn't see anything, unfortunately, about picking a size for this. I think now there's a huge empty space up there. That looks weird. I didn't see anything about moving the menu to the left or the social icons to the top. Again, the theme author didn't allow that. The theme author didn't give that option and customize. I have seen some themes that are very customizable, and I've seen plenty of themes that are not. And I've seen plenty of themes that are somewhat customizable until you buy the full version and then they're very customizable. That's a very common thing too. There's a whole cottage industry of people creating themes. Because we saw, if you recall, previously over on the themes screen, there is add new theme, and we've got thousands of themes to choose from. But still, we actually have hundreds of thousands of themes to choose from. Not just within the built-in theme marketplace here. You could do this. I'm going to go do a search. You know, just go online and do a search and look up WordPress themes for beauty salons. I'm just doing a search online, Bing, Google, whatever. And then I get a bunch of results. 40 best spa themes. 25 beautiful spa and beauty salon themes. Spa and salon WordPress themes from Theme Garden. Just a bunch of results. Actually, 2 million results. So just the ones that come with WordPress, you're not limited to that. I can go look at, and I'm curious about this one, 25 beautiful themes. That'll look great. There'll be some sort of download button. Download button, and then in, in WordPress, you will upload your theme. So you have the thousands of themes built into this. You have the ability to also search and find any other theme and upload it. I don't quite recommend for you to do what I just did. I don't recommend for you to go searching and finding themes because <coughs> anyone can create a theme. Good guys and bad guys. Any bad guy can create a theme, give it away for free, and in their theme they, they wrote the code and there's code in there that could make your site vulnerable, could put hidden spam on your site. You know, best case scenario is there's hidden code in the site that puts their ads on your site. Worst case scenario is somehow it really hacks your site so that your customer's information is stolen. So I get two million results here, but I wouldn't really do it this way. Instead, I would do it by going to reputable theme depositories, such as elegantthemes.com. Elegantthemes.com is one of a few sites that I'll show you where it's about premium WordPress themes. These are high quality, I've dealt with this company before, high quality themes, safe themes, secure themes, but eventually you're going to get into the world of premium themes, and that's not bad. That is that you're paying for a theme. Yes, you'll see thousands of free ones right here. But if you loved the Satu theme, so did a thousand other people, because it's free. So your site will look like someone else's. Your Satu theme will look like someone else's. And yes, it'll have some customization ability, so that it doesn't look like the other 900 other users that got it. But then your site looks like a hundred other people that have the same combination. What will make your site a little more unique is going with a premium theme because it's not so expensive, but you know, someone doesn't want to pay $50, $60, $40 for a theme. They'll say, I'll just find a free one. Great. Keep you know the club exclusive 
for your themes here. Elegant Themes is uh, a service. Let's see if I can find the price. They offer 87 themes, so you know, not a million results. 87 themes, but they are secure, they're updated. $69 uh, per year. That seems to be a really good price. $69 for one year, $89, $249. So what does each one come with? Well, you look right there, Photoshop files, no. <coughs> yes, if you want to customize every single aspect, you go to this level up here and you can open the Photoshop files. This one, they also have a bunch of extra plugins, extra features. They're not available on the $69 a year one. $20 more gives you that. And then at a certain point, you paid $89 this year and next year and next year, and suddenly you've paid $300 one-time fee of 250 lifetime access for every single new theme and plugin they put out this is the cost of doing business that's a tax write-off again I'm not a tax expert check with your tax expert but this is a business expense this is one of many places and no it doesn't have a million themes to choose from and yes other people could possibly pay $250 but what you're also paying here is for customer support, premium technical support. You can contact these people and they will help you fix your site and what's wrong with it and why isn't this working and all of that. You're not really going to get that tech support from these free ones. Why are they going to give that for free? And from these ones that you searched on, on Google, you get, you get what you pay for. If you get these free themes again, most likely you're not going to get very good tech support. If you do get tech support, you'll probably be at the bottom of the line because ahead of you are the people that paid. So I've dealt with these. These are some good themes. Um, another site that I recommend instead of just doing a, a search, this is a bigger one, much more famous one, much more variety. Elegant Themes is like one design studio putting out these themes and supporting them. This other theme repository is themeforest.net. 24,000 website templates. Again, not the 2 million that I saw on Google. But I can probably find my perfect theme somewhere in here. And so there's featured ones, you can browse this is more of a marketplace, a bazaar for theme designers to come here and sell their work. Theme, for, uh, theme Forest is in the middle and they check for quality and security and all of that. Just like if you get an app from the App Store, the reason it's on the App Store is because they checked it. If you just go off and find some app through a search, no one's checked it, and you're probably inviting a bad guy into your phone. Same thing with themes. If you go to someplace like this, which is like a, a, an app store, a, a theme app store, they've checked it. There's customer support. This is part of the, um, the larger Envato marketplace. Theme Forest, Code Canyon, Video Hive, Audio Jungle. I need some stock video footage. That's what Video Hive is all about. I need some audio to add to my to my site or a design for a new logo or graphics. I need photo uh, photo you know photos for my site. Photo Dune, Theme Forest. I just realized it's all animal related. And so uh, Theme Forest. I would search in here. You know, restaurant theme WordPress. Be careful because they do sell themes for WordPress and other systems like Joomla, Drupal. It's very common for people to buy an amazing theme and whoops, I bought it for Joomla. My site is WordPress. They're not compatible. So right here, the restaurant, I can go take a look. What does it actually look like? Ah, that one's too red. Well, there's probably a way to customize that. About this, oh, it looks really nice. So I can go look at it live preview. So 
this is what the site looks like. It's got a side menu, a nice big graphic. Okay, maybe I'm liking it. $59. One-time fee. more I get I think I get like three or six months of tech support on it also. No one twelve more months, seventeen dollars. So the theme author will help you. And again, I've been doing this, I've been part of various companies, I've been doing this fifteen years. Uh, this is the method that we most likely that we most often do it for a client. We meet with the client, we give them the three options. Free themes with customization paid themes with customization or code editing, which I'll mention in a moment, or a, code, a, a site from scratch, full code. One is one price, one is double that price, one is triple that price, because the third level is just so much work. And we tell them, don't get the third level. Yes, it's better for us, we're going to charge you more. But it's still not better for the client because instead of paying those seven thousand dollars for a for a theme from us, that seven could be divided into some budget for this for the site, and for the social media and the marketing plan and the photography and so forth. So to blow all of that money on just a custom theme that no one else has, we dissuade the client from that. It's too much work and too much money put down the drain because it's not. It's not the only aspect of it. Could be the same process. You buy a theme here, you download the file, and then in, in WordPress you have theme, add theme, upload. You have a brand new design. All your work is still there, it's just a new design. You often have to reactivate your menus when you go from theme to theme, but your content is still there. Level two of it all is that if we get any sort of theme, then we go to Appearance Editor. And there's code. That's the code that makes up the website. We go there and we change things that are not editable via Customize. We have full control here. But it requires a lot of extensive knowledge of code. Okay, so one of the other aspects of customization is, is widgets. Let's look at widgets. If you go to the dashboard under appearance, you have widgets. So let's look at that. Appearance, widgets. Depending on the theme, you're going to have different widget locations. This theme has sidebar, content bottom 1, and content bottom 2. Sometimes the theme authors tell you within the particular widget area, add widgets here to appear in your sidebar appears at the bottom of the content on posts and pages. Appears at the bottom of the content on posts and pages. 
So I can't perhaps still quite visualize where is this going to show up on my screen. But if I look at my current site, on the right side there's a sidebar. And I see search, recent posts, comments, archives, etc. I see content here. And I see something that says meta. And I see site admin and log out. If someone were to visit my site, I'm logged in, so mine says site admin. But if someone were to visit my site, and my site was real and live on the internet, so right here I'm going to go to it in a different browser. I'm not logged in. Let's say I'm a visitor. They come to my site. They're going to see login. By default, uh, WordPress has this login button, which is helpful for you, but could be a security risk. Because then a hacker goes to your site and there's oh there's a there's a login button. Let me go there. And they, they're going to need your login info, but then they're going to try to put in different passwords here. And then they're going to try and try and maybe retrieve. So basically, you've got the front door right there. You've got a welcome mat on the front door. And the default is there's a login button on your home page. I want to remove that. We're going to remove the front door because my notes tell you several times that to get back to that login screen, we're going to remove this button. But to get back to the login screen, you'll be able to go to your, the address of your site with wp-admin. It's, it's in the notes. But this link will take you back to, to your login. I want to remove that front door from people to get into. I want to remove this, meta. You should see that here under the widgets. Sidebar. Search, recent, blah, 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 meta. You have all of these widgets, and you have a little triangle. If you open the triangle, depending on the widget, you'll have different options. The meta widget doesn't have any other option. I only want to remove log in. Maybe I want to keep these other things, such as entries and comments and whatever. But this widget is not designed that way. It only has use it or not. It has title. And if you type something there, it shows up like this. Instead of it saying meta, it says this is the title. So there's not much customization on this widget. I don't want people to try to log in, so I'm going to select to delete. There's no confirmation. It just does it. There's no undo. It's gone. If I had customized it, it's gone. There's no undo. There's no uh, confirmation. So be careful. Now, on my home page, I don't have that meta anymore. It's a little more secure. In our particular design, we've got also archives. If I was writing blog posts, all my blog posts, people can get back to them easily in the archive. If I wrote two articles in June and one in May, and I write three in, in April, they'll all be listed right there under Archives. And notice there's a widget there, Archives. I can change the default. It says Archives. But let's say I'm, I'm writing a blog. I could write Old Articles. And now that'll say Old Articles instead of Archives. As I add more to the archives, it'll just be a big list of months. If instead I want a drop-down menu, a nice compact drop-down, cl people click that and it'll show all the items. So a lot of these, I'm not going to tell you exactly what all of these do. It's up to you to go in and say, well, what does this do? Turn it on, save it, take a look. 
decide if you like it or not. So by activating that, it shows there's two posts written in June. Show post count. So let's say I did say I did customize that. And actually, I don't want to show old articles anymore, but I just said that if I click delete, it goes away. There's no turning back. Actually, at the very bottom, you see there's available widgets, which is something that you can open and close. It's not obvious, but if you click that, it opens and closes it. And below available widgets is inactive widgets. Drag widgets here to remove them from the sidebar, but keep their settings. So if I drag this widget out over here, and again, you, you have to put it where the dotted line is. If the dotted line doesn't appear, you're not actually moving it away. So now what I've done is, notice you make any change and it happens right away, often. So now I've removed the archives but their settings, the archive settings are still active there. They're still saved, that is. If I drag it back from inactive back to the sidebar, and notice I can arrange it however I want, it comes back with my original settings. With my customized settings, that is. No, meta, you mean meta tags or? Yeah, the beginning. Oh, yeah, sorry, meta. Yeah, we, we could have done that, but I, I just showed it there that it's gone, it's gone. But yes, we could have done that too. Move it into inactive and then it's safe. So I've been adding things to the sidebar. I can move recent posts down to content bottom one. I don't know what it looks like. I'm just going to move these things, some of these things over to the other ones just to see what it looks like. Depending on the theme, so sidebar looks like that. And then we've got, here's my content bottom one and two. So zooming out in this theme. I've got a sidebar, and it'll be at the side here of every page, and then a footer one and footer two. If I go look at Contact Us, same sidebar, same footers. The default is that anything you add to these widget areas will display on every screen. Obviously, we want some customization. I don't want to display the search box, let's say, in the Contact screen. I only want search in the blog screen or in the about screen. The default is we don't, we do not have that customization yet. Later on with another plugin, a very powerful plugin called Jetpack, that'll give us a, even more customization so that I can have recent posts only appear on certain pages or screens. It's Jetpack. We'll look at it later. If you want to make a note, Jetpack gives you even more widgets and features because this particular theme gives me these widgets. A calendar widget, custom menu, handbooks. Not a lot of them, but if I'm experimenting with this, well, what does the calendar widget look like? If you drag it to sidebar, it's got a couple of options, whatever, I'll just save it, view it as a calendar. But it's not very powerful. It's not going to be a calendar where you can have reminders or you know, any sort of a, a agenda or anything. This calendar is more like a month view of what days have blog posts. On what days did you publish blog posts? The 21st 
has blog posts. It's not that it's saying today is the 21st. No, any day where you publish something will be highlighted. Last week we made a blog post. Which is on, actually off. Why is last? This is Tuesday, doesn't it? Our date must be wrong in the uh, in the settings. But uh, that it is clickable, and it shows you on June 21st, supposedly, you publish these articles. And notice the menu, the men, the calendar shows up on the sidebar. So if I put it back, it takes it away. So not a lot to choose from. Depending on your theme, you might have more. Depending on plugins, you might have more. We'll talk about plugins later, of course. But what is included here, actually, is one of the most powerful plugins. Let's do this, just, uh, just so that we're all looking at the same thing. I'm going to clear out all of my items. You can put them into inactive if you want, but I'm going to remove everything I'm going to remove everything out, keep it all empty. If you look at your site, it looks very empty because there's nothing there. Although the design is a little bit different, now notice your, your text is right in the center because there's no sidebar. But I took everything out just to show you because we actually have an extremely powerful but humble looking widget, the text widget. So you can either grab a widget and drag it to where you want, or click a widget and then from here select where you want. And this is useful sometimes when you've got a lot of widgets that you scroll down. And instead of clicking and holding and dragging and dragging and dragging up, just click it and then select quickly, put it into my sidebar. Add. Let's add the text widget. Let's see what this looks like. There's a title spot. I'm just going to write here uh, my title. Content. This is some content. Uh, don't worry about that check mark. Just save. Visit site. See what, see what you did with this widget. I added the text widget and OK, it wrote my title. This is some content. You can add more than one. I'm going to add another text widget in the same area. You can add two calendars if you want. You can add six calendars if you want. I've got one text and a second text. The second text. More text. So I've got two little text blocks. Okay, text. This is the most powerful plugin because if you didn't notice, this is the most powerful basic plugin. It says arbitrary text or HTML. If you know any HTML, you can write it right here. I wrote my title. This is some content. If you write some HTML code like I'm about to, you can do this or not. But if you write some code like this, this will process it. And this is going to give me a pink background color. There's no button here for any styling. But if you know a little HTML, I can do what I want. Mm -hmm. So, how many of you know any HTML or CSS? Very few people. So, okay, let's say I don't know any HTML. It's still worthless to me. No, this is any HTML. We can embed a YouTube video right here. We can embed a podcast here. We can embed a PowerPoint. We can, do, we can embed any content that we want here. We're going to do that right now. We're going to put a YouTube video here. There's no button that says add a YouTube video. But this will take any code. And YouTube, almost every website nowadays, multimedia website, will give you code to put that multimedia on your website. It's called embed code. 
We're going to do that right now with YouTube. We're going to go borrow a video on YouTube and put it right on our site. I'm going to say on my second widget here. Watch our video. And in this area, I'm going to put a YouTube video. So open a new window and go to youtube.com. We're going to get any sort of video. Let's say at the top, I'm going to search. This is a baking website, right? A cooking website. I'm going to say how to bake a cake. a variety of videos. How to bake a sonic cake. Perfect. So you find any video, click on it to view it. Below the video, there's a little spot here. Share. So any video that you've clicked on, you have to click on it to view it first. Below the name of the video, if you click share, send this video to Facebook, to Reddit, whatever. Embed it on my site. If you click embed, here's some HTML code. I copy this, I paste it into my text widget. I don't know what it means, but that's the code that it gave me. Save it. Now on my sidebar, I've got a video. I didn't have to upload it. I didn't have to make it myself. It's up on YouTube. I get the embed code. So once again, find any video out there. Maybe this one, how to make a watermelon cake. Click anything. Below the, below the title and description of the video, you have to click the video first. And then you'll see share to social media share or embed on your website. Copy that code. Paste it into your widget. <coughs> Paste it into your text widget, as is. If you know a little HTML, you might be able to decipher it. You don't need, ne that's not necessary, of course. So then just paste it in, save it, and then when you view when you view site, that video automatically should should load up. That code gets processed, <coughs> and then it's there on your site. Now it is kind of small because it's the constraints of the sidewalk. It's not exactly designed to show you. But it has the ability to pause and play. So that it shows it to you. You mean you you don't want the buttons on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you put this into inactive, it'll it'll save everything. So right here, where I've added my video. I could pull it over to an active and it will save. But I mean, like, the users' recent comments and the other things over there, you, you have to do that in order to have the video. Right? Yes, exactly. I just moved them out of the way to make my menu, my sidebar a little cleaner oh. for you guys, for you to see that I've added this new video. And so...
this works on YouTube. 99% of, of videos uh, have this. If you look right below a video, you've got share. If there is no share button, then that YouTube, uh, that YouTuber, that YouTube video person deactivated it, so then you can't embed it. If you don't see share, you can't embed it. And so well. most videos are going to have that embed. Now remind me in this class, because I teach way too many classes, did I mention YouTube and a couple of other multimedia sites yeah. previously? Okay, so I mentioned probably SoundCloud yeah. and all of that. So same thing with SoundCloud. You can get the SoundCloud embed code and embed it into your text widget. You can put more than one. In one text widget I can go and put many things. Let's say I go to um, so I, I go to Audio Mac. You know that's another that's another website there for audio. So this is more like a little audio uh, audio book here. Every site's going to vary a little bit. Some of them li uh, clearly call it embed. Over at Audio Mac, they use the icon right here. This is a little like code icon. It's not obvious. Over on Vimeo, it's a little airplane. So sometimes you have to poke around here. Obviously, this is Facebook and Twitter. But at the very least, if you hover your mouse on it, it says embed. So this is the embed code for this audio track. I click on that. Well, there's the code. And this one's got, I can have it large size, standard size, thin size, specifically for WordPress. Well, um, oftentimes if you use the WordPress code, it works best. But let's see what it looks like. I'll just get the thin one. And I'll add another text widget. I can reuse the same one, but I'll add another text widget. and I've got a little sound file. Investment Tips for Millennials May 28, 2016 It's never too early to start thinking about retirement. Yes, even if you're a millennial. That embed code, again, it looks simply like here's a spot for me to write some text. But it says any text or HTML or CSS. And so many sites out there now give you this embed code for you to do as you wish. If the embed code is not there, then obviously they didn't want it to be embedded to your site. But besides that, it should be okay for you to put on your site. Yes? What's standard versus thin? Is that the way it looks? Exactly. Notice. Okay. Notice here with large, it's gonna be it's gonna look like that on my site, really big. And then thin, it's just gonna be that little strip. Over on YouTube, we have something like that too. If I wanted to embed this my little pony video and who, who wouldn't want to, uh, you'd see right here under, under uh, show more. Here's the, here's the default code of, of a video, but under show more, different sizes of the video, show suggested videos. Do you notice you watch a video and then at the very end it says, why not also watch this one? If you don't want to give free advertising to other people's videos, turn that off. Right now, it'll have all the player controls, pause, play, and so forth. If you don't want all of those controls, you turn that off, and it's just a basic play and pause. No fast forward, no, no other special features. Show video title. Again, if you don't want it to show the title, see it's got the title up here. If you don't want that title, turn it off, turn off play, privacy enhancing. What does that one do? tell you there exactly what. It'll be more private, I guess. So now that version of the code has changed a little bit right here. I take that, add it to my site, and I have different features for my, my embed. You can do that on YouTube, 
Vimeo, SlideShare, Audio Mac, Pandora, Spotify, all of these uh, multimedia sites, Flickr, all of these sites have a uh, embed code. So these are the widgets. Depending on your theme, you may have a lot of them, or these basic ones. Depending on your theme, you have many. You may have many locations for you to add to them. And the default is all your widgets will exist on all your pages. Um, after the break, we'll talk about uh, uh, plugins, because plugins are um, more features that we can add to the site, and more features could be more widgets. There could be a widget I want to add, for example, on the home page, and I want it to simply have a button that says go to my Twitter. I want my latest tweets to always show up on the corner here, or I want it to have a little Facebook button. Uh, to, uh, to automatically like. This one doesn't do that. It takes you to Facebook, but I want you know those extra features. That's going to be a plugin. We're going to take our, our second break, and then we'll talk about plugins and what more we can do with our site. It's 8.30. Let's take a break until 8.40, and we'll go on.